right, all right. The hooch is swelling up at Red Kayak Guy headquarters. And uh, Chattahoochee is swelling. It's rising. It's the, uh, by the end of the day, this water should be up over the path here, probably up to this rock right here. I've had it higher before. I've had it all the way up to the, right to the edge here of the deck. So this one's not gonna get that big, but uh, <clears throat> you can see across the way over there, it's the old sand company. That's the uh, Roswell Park and Rec. And that water's already up to their parking lot. But there was a release today at Buford Dam that should be hitting here around an hour from now, two hours from now. It's gonna take this up even more. It's already rising, but you add that release to it and boom. Uh, and another, I'm, I'm thinking another two, two feet here. So let's get out there. Isn't that what a normal person would do? I think so. I think he would jump in his kayak and go explore. Days like this, when the water swells up, goes over the bank, you have the opportunity to do some kayak hiking, I like to call it, where you can get up in the trail system and uh, paddle around in the trail system. So we'll see what, what's possible today. Let's go. Now I've actually put in here before when it was super high. I've actually launched off of my deck right here. I've actually pushed the kayak right into the water. It's only happened a couple times. Hopefully the weather cooperates. We're supposed to get a little more rain in the next hour and then that should be it. So I could also enter right here it's all the way up here by the time we get back it should be up here on the trail well, i could launch here but uh it's easier just to go down to the dock that we have down here look at the water approaching the trail yeah i mean this most likely is all going to be underwater here i'm guessing this trail pretty soon so maybe when i come back i can kayak right up to my deck Whoa, stairs are flooded. All right, gotta be very careful here. Very careful. Whoa, so this dock rises with the water. And uh, <laughs> you can see it's way up. It's about eight feet up right now from what it usually is. As you can see, my head is in the trees. So what I'd like to do, probably asking yourself, how do you get in here? You always wanna get on the backside, get out as much current as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put him back here. Woo, I haven't paddled in a flood in a while. It's exciting. Probably asking yourself, how do I do this? You'll find out. We're right at the point now where it's starting to go over the bank over there. It's right at the lip. So another foot, it'll breach and head into that parking lot. And it'll get up, these are all the trails to Don White Park. And uh, give you a point of reference, the fence over there in the parking lot. I've actually been sitting at the top of that fence in, in the water. The water's been all the way to the top of that fence and I've been sitting right there with my hand on that top rail. So this is, you know, pretty big, but this is not epic big, not yet. In order, always comfort is important. All right, so those like that. Got a nice cushion. This is my PFD, also my back support. I 
use this towel so I can put my bags in there and then I can push it back and pull it out almost like a drawer if I need it need anything for all my accessories camera items etc etc sunglasses which I probably won't need put the bag way back in there and then got a cooler bag with water some snacks that sort of thing I'll put that back here and then I can push all that back and then as I need it pull it out like a drawer all right this is like my uh, living room carpeting. I do this for a couple reasons. One, it kind of absorbs any kind of condensation, moisture. Also insulates from the bottom of the boat, keeps, keeps the boat a little warmer. And lastly, it, it keeps all my stuff together. So it's not, you know, all bouncing around. As you'll see, it kind of, it keeps everything from sliding around. There we go. We are ready to roll. Sun's trying to come out. All right. Whew. There we go. Put it in on the corner, slide it in. Like that. This is when you just act like a baby. You get on your butt. Put your two feet in, get your balance. Right here, two hands on the dock, and you just slide your butt in, nice and easy. And now, you're ready to roll, right through the trees. All right, so, the trick to this with the high current, first of all, when it gets super high, the water spreads out. So it's not as strong as you would think. It can be a lot stronger when it's a lot shallower. Uh, but let's go check out the situation across the way. But the way to do this would be go up, you follow the banks, as close to the banks as possible, you'll be out in the current. Obviously, this is, like I said, this current isn't super big because again, as it's spreading out, more and more territory to cover. Water's going over the bank over there. What I do in this situation, I'm able to paddle right on over to uh, to the jogging trails, and I can paddle up the jogging trails. But the water's not that high yet; it's getting there. Yeah, I mean, peak peak of this thing isn't going to hit until later on tonight. If you can believe that? It's, it's already approaching. It's in the parking lot. That'll all be underwater pretty soon. Probably in an hour or so. This is gonna be more challenging. If it were higher, like I said, I could get off of this river and get into the trails and just cruise right on up the river. I could make it on the trails, another foot of water. I could make it all the way to 400, Georgia 400 on the trails. And it's warming up too. About 50 degrees. Perfect. Perfect day for kayak hiking. Tell you what, the water's like this, this high. It's a great time to snag some lost fishing lures that have been in the trees, high up in the trees. I know where a few are that I can never get to when the water's low. Yep. It's moving in. All right, well, I'm gonna have to paddle up, this, up the bank. So I think I'm gonna give it a break on the camera. I'll be back to you when I uh, get a little ways up the river. We're out. Enough to get on the Dawn White trails. Just got to paddle against the current. But always stay on the bank, as far as the bank as you can. As you can see, there's really hardly any current over here compared to out in the middle. So I'll make things easier or something. That's Dawn White right over there on the left. And the water's just breached the bank. Oh, the sun's coming out. Very nice.
weird, weird weather day. here when the water's up to the volleyball courts over there so this is a mile flood at the moment but they released deeper dam at 6 a.m. which means it hits here by generally uh, three two or three uh, which is right now so this water already rising because of the river is most definitely gonna rise uh, a lot more when the when the release is for sure so we'll just have to stay out here until that happens
through those trees. <sighs> it's rising. It's definitely going to be some opportunity. This is a couple trails right past 400. <sighs> but when we get up to where the Martin's Landing, Tennis Courts, the Swim Bowl area, that's where all the big trails, walking trails, they're like eight feet wide. And when you get some water in there, man, it's a blast. going to hit right about now. So this was all the rainwater that filled up the playground like a swimming pool as you can see. Uh, and it's just starting to drain but right about now is when it's, it's going to start going back up again too so interesting. Uh, there's, there's the playground and the swimming pool. Yeah, the high water mark again for me was it's about three feet. I've seen it uh, three feet higher. I've seen it all the way up to the concrete up there on the pool. Not in the pool, but up to the concrete. And that's about three feet. So, yeah, I mean, there's the pool right there. So you do the math. It'll be interesting to see what this release, how much it, uh, it brings, how much it goes up. I'm going to say about a foot and a half. We'll see. So a foot and a half put it right at the bottom of the fence right there. Ford Shoals straight ahead, which today is the lake of Island Ford. You will not see any rocks. I'm fairly certain it'll be high enough to get into the trail system. This is the mouth of the creek that's uh, just uh, south of the clubhouse, which is now flooded. That's what leads into the lake on the riverside. It's all one huge lake right now. got clean the water is back here. Interesting. So this is the water that uh, drains out of Martin's Landing Lake. And it's all very clean still. I wonder what happens when the private lake no trespassing signs get covered in water. I respect their privacy. This is a nice little townhome community. And uh, generally, this right where right, we are here, this creek is low, and then there's a levee you cannot get over. It's a concrete levee. So when it's normal level, level, you can't get over that levee, which is right, right about here somewhere. Clearly, yeah, it's right about here. This is a levee you cannot get through when it's not flooded. You can see Riverside Drive straight across there. You can see the, the road. Let's see if we get a car to drive by. Look how high it is to the road. That's how high this lake is right now. Look at that. Again, you, you put three feet more water in here, this thing's going to be almost up to the road. Cool. God, the weather's weird. The sun comes out, it warms up, then it goes away, and it's chilly, and it gets windy, and then it's not windy. It's crazy.
two islands in Island Fork. This is the uh, northern island. Um, that this is the bottom of it, and the top of it is where the shoals are. And then you got the second island above that, which is uh, goes all the way up to the boat line, pretty much. And since this water is so high today, and because the water is moving so fast on the right side, we're going to take the left side because usually the left side is just a bunch of a bunch of down trees. I mean, tons of down trees. So it's a difficult way to get through unless you know the perfect level to do it at. So always check that before you go. But, but right now, I mean, this is the fun part about this is when we get up there to the shoals. The shoals will be calm. It'll be like a, it's like a, an eddy below a rock. Well, in this case, the big island is that rock, and so everything below the big island is just calm. It's a, it just keeps you right there. Uh, very surreal. So we're gonna take this route up. It's so wild, it looks like completely different right now. The current will be a lot less on this side. So the same rules apply trying to stay out of current when you're going up river. The, the two tricks really are, one, stay on the side that's across from where the, the bend in the river is, because the energy will follow the bend as much as you can. In this case, you can see it's bending around the left side there, along the left side. So most of the water energy is going to be pushing up against that bank on the way down, so I'm staying over here on the right side. Second thing is, as, get as close as you can to the bank and just utilize all these down trees. Anything that breaks any kind of current on the farthest to the right is the route to go. I mean, I'm hardly in any current right here, as you see. And over on the left, it's moving pretty well. So stay away from the opposite of the bend side and as close to the bank as you can. Kind of meandering in and out between trees and stuff. Now, fortunately, this side creek is like a third of the current of the main river. side so I shifted over to the left catching these trees hardly any current So if you're familiar with this, this island, uh, as we're approaching Island Ford, this is a the little beach where the cut-through is, you know, a little, little cut-through area, usually. It's completely flooded out. Yeah, this is usually a beach where I am right now. Wow. 
Wow, and the cut through, you can't even recognize it. Yeah, it's right here. This is where the tree crosses the cut through, generally. You can walk across the tree, go, go to the second part of this island, but man, that's a washout, man. The whole island is underwater up here. Yeah, look at that. It's definitely coming up. Now, this is when it should start rising right now. So it's not, this wasn't a huge release. I call it a half release, basically, but it is a three or four hour release. So it's just a lot of water is going to be added to this river. And it's, it's going to be hitting right, right now, but it won't be noticeable necessarily. I'll notice the current picking up, and this will just gently keep rising. So I, can, I, I think you could safely add about a foot and a half to what it is right now over the next two hours. Now this is a, coming up the reward for doing all this hard work paddling. This is the best part, the biggest reward. First of all, this is where all the rocks are, right? But over here, just below this island, it's, it's the eddy. You get in this eddy and you literally will just sit there, perfectly calm. Everything's underwater. It'll even, it'll start drawing me up towards that island. Like right now, I'm still being pushed down, right? See the current? And then all of a sudden, watch what happens. <laughs> How cool is that? It's just immediately magnetic pull towards the island. Now I'm in a no current zone. And as I get a little closer even, I mean, this is the eddy. That's how big this eddy is right here because the water's moving so much on the left and the right. Boy, those geese are pretty selfish. They don't like me out of here. Tough. Wow. Look at this place. This is always so cool. I want to let the water go up a little bit before I go over to the trails. Let's see if we can get a little rise. I guess it's time for beer. Let's so get into some trouble on the trails. First, I'm going to give you the uh, 360. Riverside Drive right over there. See how high the water is. Hello, geese. So, over here. So, usually this is where the big rock on at Island Ford, uh, the climbing rock is right over there to the right. Uh, generally, and this is where all the big rocks are, right here. Usually. It's strong. The, the, the release is definitely hitting right now. Get out on either side and it's super strong. Just want to keep your, your nose pointed up. Break that current. You gotta watch out for monsters like that right there. Big old stump. I mean, honestly, it's hard to get in trouble with those because they're floating, you're floating. It's not like they're gonna take you out or anything. Just be aware. Uh, all right. Indeed, the water is up on the trail. Let's see how far. There's a couple of different areas we can enter. Kai hiking. Here we go. Sorry, how awesome is this? So we're on the trail now. And if you can imagine another foot and a half of water, this is going to be entering right now. This water right about here is probably about a six, about six inches to a foot. I've been in here when it was about three feet of water here. And it looks like we might be heading towards something like that. See, that runs out right there, but when it goes up another foot, be able to go all the way down that trail.
pick up the trail on the other side. Climbing rock right there. Oh, there's a trail sign. Excellent. Find out where we are. as far as you can go today uh, like I said if it's another foot and a half you can follow this trail all the way you can even go up up that way up the valley a little bit so it's still moving in see some other uh, in this in this area actually when the water was up another three feet there's a kayak hiking video that's one of my best of uh, craziest shorts of the year video find that one uh, the craziest the craziest shorts from last year and on one of those is the kayak hiking video I'm talking about and it shows me going down those trails back there with three feet of water
fork in the road. When you run into a fork in the road, you take it. Buggy bear. But in this case, we're gonna turn around. I don't have to go much further. It's possible this water could be two feet higher by tomorrow. We'll see. It depends on whether they do any more releases. And if that's the case, we got right here. We could go a feet of one of those trails quite a ways. feet of water in front of me there. Just a little further and it just drops down. Oh well. Pretty cool though. So a couple of years ago when we had the high water mark I was talking about, it's about three feet higher than this. The dumpster from the other side of the clubhouse floated all the way over here and was lodged in this tree right here to the right. It was in the tree, a dumpster, full, full dumpster. That shows you how much water was in here. And it was right there. It was all lodged in that tree. And the riverbank is right below 
right below me here, it drops down. That was crazy. But yeah, an extra three feet of water will do it. It was a little tricky getting out of here. trails here. This is just raw woods I'm cruising through. This is not a trail system.
got over the bank here a little bit, enough to get to the, up to the bench. So you can see the water is draining in here, so because it gets more narrow, um, it's definitely dropping in. Let's see how far we can get. Ahead, you can see the bridge. This is that creek that is just uh, north of the tennis club, and this trail and everything else is kind of flooded and just turned into the creek. Yeah, we one more foot, one more foot, and we would be heading down these jogging trails right through this straight ahead here. I just don't think, I don't think we have enough today. We'll try. Yeah, just gotta get through this. Yeah, you can see up here the gravel. I mean, it's just barely over the gravel. But I've gone way, I've gone all the way to Riverside almost through all these trails before. Right here, run out of room. Where's everybody? Tell you what, though, when it goes to the other foot, this is some of the best kayaking. Look how wide everything is, it's all cleared out. You can cruise all over the place. So, the high water mark again that I've been involved in, the water was up to where the walk platform is here on the bridge. So, another foot and a half. That's what I thought earlier. So that's we're gonna be in if it goes up anymore, that'll equal the biggest one we've had in about the last 10 years. Right now we're about a foot and a half short. I'll tell you what, it's again I use this word, it's surreal when you see the river just overtake things. Like this. I mean usually right where I'm sitting is a creek with banks about 10 feet high on both sides. I come in the creek mouth there, but that big old tree was blocking it. But you can see there's lots of places where it's breached the bank now. I'm gonna go back the way we came. So number one safety rule, if you're not very experienced at this, I know this river very well. I know where every tree is, every stump, it's all underwater right now. So I'm obviously staying away from all that. The other thing is make sure you're always vertical. I mean, if I'm sideways and floating, it's because I know where I am. I know I'm in the middle of the river. I know there's no trees anywhere. But um, if you don't know the river or the water that you're on anywhere, 
you got to stay vertical when you have current like this. You hit anything when you're sideways in this kind of current, you're going to flip. Without a doubt. And then, then what are you going to do? Um, so, number one rule, stay vertical. Uh, and just, you know, if you don't know the water, you don't know what's here, stay in the middle. Because all the stumps are on the side. And be safe. flooded
in trouble again. What are you gonna do? I'm parking here. Yeah, I definitely have tobacco. Oh well, come and get me. day for a kayak. Right there. Yep, this is about where it runs out. Pretty cool, man. See, that was a new sewage, uh, I don't know what you call it, pipe, whatever. And previously in floods, those things were just sewage was pouring out the top, so they've replaced all those. And so, good job, City of Roswell call out to them because they fixed it and we don't have the water just spewing out of those things.
to do right now because So they got the trails blocked off below, going down the river on the uh, non-white side. We're going to see what we can do on the other side. Crazy man. There are big fish in here. I just saw one surface. They get pushed out, out of the river, and they're over here in the little shallows, the swamp. This is about two feet deep right here. Directly across from Donnelly. Pretty awesome. Again, I would recommend this for everybody. I mean, I, I'm on this river 275 plus days a year. I know it. I can do it blind. I know where every single stump is. Uh, so we, you know, are safely exploring the little side areas. But uh, really, get your, you got to get your, your water legs, so to speak, and understand the water you're on before you start doing this stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the day. I'll put this together in a nice little summary for you. A little summary package, highlight package. And uh, Red Kayak guy just signing off before I get cut off. Had a great day out here. And uh, you know, recreational kayaking is a different animal. And there's so many things you can do if you know what you're doing. And really have fun. Be prepared, have your layers. Have all the stuff you need, PFD, etc. And just be safe. That said, I still got battery life, so we're going to keep going, but that was my uh, sign off for later when I get cut off. <laughs> so you never want to do what I'm doing right now, sideways, right? Ever, unless you know exactly where you are. And I do.
started, I pointed this fence out from across the way on my dock. And you can see how much has gone up. A lot. But again, the high water mark for me is up to the top, the top beam right here. So again, another two feet. But this is perfect. Here's my dock right over there. Right in front of the clubhouse. Size of that stump. The bigger. Again, though, don't panic. Nothing's gonna happen. I mean, if it bumped into me, it bumped into me. We're floating over. That's the old, that's an old shack and store stuff. Right through those bushes is the rowing, the rowing clubs, all the crew clubs. You can see their boats. And I live right over there. So, not a bad day. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. And it's still rising from what I can see. It's slow, but it's still rising. Look at that. And that's the St. Andrew's Church right over there.
a bunch of cords with you. In this case, I'm just gonna tie off to this fence, hang out, finish my beer, finish my cigar. What a day, what a day. Oh, what an epic day, man. Hope you enjoyed it. You should try it sometime, but be safe. Know what you're doing, know the water, know where all the stumps and dangers are, and then do it. Red Kai Kai, out.